crashed in. I, I mean, and, and they know emotionally people needed to see the dead body. You know, uh, habeas corpus goes back not just to show the body. If, if you're going to go to jail for something, they need evidence of it. Show the person you killed. It even predates that in a dual way that if the king said there's a bounty on this person, you had to bring the body. Bring him in, dead or alive, but bring the body. Bring the body strapped over the horse or you don't get the bounty. But you notice in this dead or alive, we don't get to see it. Now, you know, like Mussolini being hauled up in Rome by his feet to be spit on for three days by hundreds of thousands of people or Ceausescu. You know, you want to see the body. We saw Saddam hung. We, he was in a prison for a year in front of everybody. Where is the body? Where is the body? Where is the body? No, we're not being shown that. He's thrown into the ocean. And I told Kurt Nemo last night, I said, we need a part in the article about where is his body? And conveniently, they're thrown in the ocean. Now, joining us from Pakistan, um, and we'll find out how close to where this reportedly happened outside one of their largest cities, uh, is General Hamid Ghul, retired Pakistani Army General, served as the Director General of Pakistani's Inner Service uh, Intelligence. He was instrumental in the anti-Soviet support of Mujahideen in the Afghan war uh, in 79 to 89. And he was also a uh, veteran of a war uh, with India as a uh, ground soldier. And we appreciate Hamid Ghul joining us to give us his take uh, on what is unfolding here. Uh, sir, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Eric. Uh, General Ghul, you've got the floor. What do you make of this? I, I see it as a complete psyop because my White House sources nine years ago on record confirmed that uh, he had uh, been killed and was frozen on ice. But, uh, I mean, is there? what's your take on this? Well, they had three uh, people done away with it. Sometimes in, in uh, 2005, uh, there was a cell which was meant specially to uh, chase and track Osama bin Laden. And then it was called off. I mean, that was abolished altogether. So you are quite right. There is a great deal of suspicion, especially that the, the question of body, as you were mentioning, is a very important question. Now, we know that every single U.S. soldier carries a video camera in his helmet. And why that footage has not been shown to the world so that the world would be convinced? And one picture that I saw of Osama bin Laden, that looks very young, Osama. Uh, bin Laden, uh, uh, 10 years ago, was older, and this, this uh, picture showed him even younger than that com in comparison. Uh, no, sir, they now admit no. it's a fake photo. So they, so they already put fake photos out to the media showing the complete uh, d uh, uh, disregard for the public. But but going back specifically, sir, as you point out, it, it was obviously a younger bin Laden from what he would be today. It looks like about a 1999 photo that's been photoshopped and they admit that but what about president benazir Bhutto? she said that bin laden had been killed and was dead and then she was of course murdered uh uh break that down for us sir yeah that is that is what pervez musharraf also repeated if you remember pervez musharraf said that he's dead and uh, he very authentically he said i know he's dead so if one goes by that then this seems to be just a make-believe drama uh, in aid of uh, Obama's uh, campaign next year for his uh, rerun of the uh, presidential election. Uh, of course, so he, he's got uh, all the advantage for it, but it's only a symbolic victory. As a soldier, I look at it differently, and let me explain it to you. I think uh, Osama bin Laden, if at all he was living, he was a very, very ill man, and he would have perished in any case with passage of time. Over the 10 years, his image and his cloud has receded into the history. And now with this, uh, the, the, his, he putting up a fight, one helicopter brought down, and his wife stood in front of him, and his son was killed along with his two guards. Now this is going to create uh, a stuff that is fit for the folklore, for the legend-making, and, and for uh, the battle, battle ballot. So I think uh, Ted Osama is going to be a terrible phenomena for you, for the Americans, and for the Western world, uh, because this is going to enrage uh, the Arab opinion, because uh, Arab opinion was so badly hurt when uh, Saddam Hussein was caught and he was dragged out of a rat hole, and he was humiliated. 
So this was a sort of a shame that was held on the, the Arab psyche. But uh, this time round, it's going to be different. Osama will appear as now a hero, and he will be act in the memory of the people, and already the Arab uh, wave of public wave, which is uh, on the rise, it is going to catch hold of it. And if that wave does not get satisfied through democratic means, and, and as, it, as it appears they are being blocked, then I think they will be left with no choice but to adapt to uh, the philosophy that uh, Osama bin Laden had uh, earlier adopted. General Hamid Gul, I completely concur. For Western opinion, it makes Obama look like he's tough. A week after he kicks off his election campaign, uh, it makes you know the wars look like they've paid off. But all over Central Asia, the Middle East, it builds him up as a guy that went out in a blaze of glory, you know, up on the mountaintop, uh, like in For the Bell Tolls. Uh, I mean, this really sells that image and really resuscitates uh, bin Laden, who had faded back into the annals. But Madeleine Albright, sir, and I would direct you to prisonplanet.com and infowars.com, though the sites are pretty much down right now because of mega traffic. We, I was told by, uh, and I'm just giving you this intel because I want you to be able to look into it, Steve Pachinik, who was the number two man under Kissinger, who said he worked with bin Laden and worked with uh, you know, the Pakistanis uh, against the Russians. He told me in April of 2002 that he was dead on ice and that it would be rolled out whenever they felt like it. Then Albright came out on Fox News a year later and said that. And I had two other White House sources before this was even news tell me this. And these are high-powered people who were proud of this. And they're so arrogant that they would say this, uh, and, and, and then now they put out a fake photo. They they throw the body away, uh, you know, instead of handing it over to the to the nearest mosque, uh, you know, that was a Wahhabist in the area. Uh, that, of course, would be the Islamic tradition. Correct me if I'm wrong, sir. Oh yes, that is, uh, it's very disgraceful, really, the way they have conducted themselves. And after that, Hillary Clinton going on the TV and showing all the imperial hubris that she could put out. It is now really nauseating because this is a big victory, I can tell you. Osama, if at all, he has been now killed, then he was a drag on the operations of Al-Qaeda. He was not helpful at all because he was uh, absolutely made out of the battle. So what good is it going to be? And now you are telling Taliban once again, you were on the right track a little bit, but now you are telling them, put down your weapons, this is the condition, and we will never accept this. This is not, this is only symbolic, it's only psychological boost to the American people, if at all, and as you said, that it, is, it may be a boost for Obama's campaign, but other than that, I can assure you, as far as the real matters are concerned, they are going to, this, they are going to be worse than before, because uh, Al-Qaeda is now spread out into Maghreb, what is North Africa, into Yemen, into Somalia, into Chad, into many other places. So Al-Qaeda is a now growing and phenomena, expanding phenomena, while the American might and, and their arrogance is a diminishing phenomenon. Uh, General Gould, uh, I mean, there's so many points, so many questions I have, but, but, but just looking at this, I remember you were on six months ago and you said the West has lost the war for the opium, for the oil. Uh, the people are turning against them. The Pakistani government will soon order the drones out. Uh, a week ago, they said, that's it. You must have them out by mid-May. That's it. And then suddenly this happens. Uh, I think this timing of this ace in the hole they've pulled in this card game, uh, what what are the globalist powers that have hijacked the U.S. and England uh, and, and are trying to uh, destabilize your country? What are they? How are they planning to use this domestically uh, 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 in Pakistan? And uh, wh what's the sentiment of the Pakistani army dealing with a thousand drones bombing your country? Very, very negative. Very, very enraged. Very, very angry. I can assure you, people of Pakistan are sick and fed up. And I think already the limits of our tolerance has been uh, transgressed. And I think uh, there is going to be a lot of trouble because lines of communication run through Pakistan, of course. And if the, uh, the army is not uh, backing the uh, line of communication, not supporting it, not protecting it, then I can assure you that it will not work out. And I think the battle is lost as far as Afghanistan is concerned. Taliban are on the surge this time. 
1st of May yesterday, they said Operation Badar, which is a new operation which they are launching, the spring offensive, and I think there is no way because the battle on the battlefield it has been lost. I am prepared to sit down with any top general of America and discuss with him how do you tell me you are going to win? We'll war game it, and I can assure you he will lose hands down. Now, the other point that you were talking about is Pakistan. If Pakistan gets destabilized as a result of this, and I fear and I suspect, and so do the people of Pakistan and the armed forces of Pakistan, that American, some dark impulse in, in America, not the whole, whole lot of Americans, but like, People like Patriots or John Allen or McChrystal earlier on and uh, Mac, um, uh, Mike Mullen, I think they are out for snatching our nuclear assets. This is not going to happen. This is going to be very dangerous because a desperate Pakistan would be a terrible enemy to deal with because Pakistan is not a pushover. It's a very large nation. It has many abilities. It is self-sufficient in food. It has a very large army. It has, a, it has a, a Mujahideen, uh, uh, you know, coming up. The spirit of jihad is there. It has been kindled uh, to, to an extent that it cannot be now contained. And if it is fueled from um, uh, outside by aggression, then it is going to become a bonfire and it is going to consume the entire region. And well, that's my next point, sir. Yeah, we have Saudi Arabia now running to Pakistan for help, cutting oil production because the West is trying to destabilize them as well. That's now confirmed, uh, trying to manipulate the Arab Spring. I mean, we could be creeping towards a conflagration. Many analysts I interview who I respect are saying we are edging towards World War III starting in Pakistan if the globalist, uh, the dark impulse, go ahead with this. Yeah, that's right. I think I agree with your assessment. And it is all because India and Israel are now riding the policies of America. This is very unfortunate that American lives are being lost, American money is being squandered, all to serve somebody else's interest. Now, this is diabolical, and I think this must stop. Bottom line, uh, you are saying from the evidence you have, this whole bin Laden killing is a staged event. Cannot definitely say, but why don't they show the body? They should have taken the body to the ground zero and then displayed it there and then handed over to the Muslims for a decent Islamic burial. That's a very simple thing that should have been done. Why has it not been done? It's just incredible, sir. Uh, uh, other key points about where this is going clearly a propaganda operation. Any other points? Uh, no, I think now they, they are aiming at Pakistan and it will be disastrous if they open the another war because they have uh, Iraq is not settled yet, Afghanistan they are losing in and uh, as far as Pakistan is concerned, if they go for it, then it will be disastrous because I don't think the regional powers, and I mean China... Would General Ghul, General Ghul, stay there for one moment. This is GCN, the Genesis Communications Radio Network. This is Alex Jones with five good reasons you should consider buying a solar power generator. Number one, new climate legislation could easily double or triple your electric bill. Number two, our new energy czar wants to control how much power your electric company allows you to have. It's true. Total government control of electricity in the name of smart grid technology is coming. Number three, in some areas of the country, the power grid is dangerously overloaded. And now new socialist legislation is only compounding the problem. Number four, dangerous weather is always a threat to local grids. Every year, thousands of families lose their power from weather-related outages. Number five, a solar power generator provides powerful backup insurance and peace of mind. Folks, I really believe in the solar power generators offered by Solutions from Science, one of my oldest sponsors. You can get more information at www.mysolarbackup.com. That's mysolarbackup.com. Remember, the government doesn't own the sun, so go to mysolarbackup.com or call 1-877-327-0365. Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. 
You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones.